This Valiant player suffered a punishment for something their boyfriend said in game. I'm curious as to what your thoughts are on this scenario and whether you think it's fair or not. So for context, this all started with this tweet that was posted by Andrew, who is a Phoenix main. That is like his main shtick with content. I always get his lives on my TikTok. Imagine losing the first round and your duo acts like this and you defend them for the rest of the game. Genuinely baffles me how people with a platform and also compete at such high level can surround themselves with such inhuman people like this and validate their behavior. Surround yourself with better people at Elysian FPS, who you are as a person is greatly reflected by who you surround yourself with. It shows with how you decided to deal with the whole situation too. So I'm going to play this full clip from you. It is from his VOD on September 1st. Also, I will preface this by saying you need to listen carefully to the comms and it's going to be a little bit hard to hear because the volume is low. The Sova is the boyfriend, so this character, and then the Valorant character Deadlock, which is also another the other blonde character in game, is the girlfriend or Elysian. Player standing. Is One enemy remaining. Oh. Please do not talk to me. Huh? Yeah, you won't be serious? Why are we you walked in Reina at the end and you're talking to me, the audacity. Please kill yourself and you're not talk to me. Bro, oh wait, Silver, what's wrong with you, fam? Like, why why are you reacting like this, bro? Oh, Reina, can you just stop? Put both sides of the Silver's pillow warm tonight. Fucked up. Actually, fucked up. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just still shocked at how angry you got, bro. Literally one round, bro. One com. One comment is all it took. To give you some more context, and I'm going to repeat it, but not repeat it because it's a little bit hard to hear. So in Valorant, team comp also makes a big deal, okay? And if you look at the agents that is locked in, there are three duelists whose main focus is to enter into the site and clear space and do damage. And then we have two utility, okay? I haven't played in a minute, so I kind of forgot what deadlock is, but basically two like utility style champions. So what Sova was mad about is the fact that Reyna had the final champion pick in or character select, right? And there are characters in this game that have smokes, which are very important for shooter games, okay? FPS games. But instead of choosing a smoke, they chose Reyna, another duelist, when they already have two duelists locked in. So that's why Sova was really upset because it's pretty difficult to play a FPS shooter when your team does not have smokes, but the enemy does. So I can understand that is a fair reason to be upset. Not a fair reason to say what he said. So Sova called Reyna the R word and then told Reyna to KYS because of their agent selection. And then over here, when Reyna was talking, from what I understand, from what I could hear, because it's a bit hard to hear, um, Reyna typed in chat and Deadlock was like, Reyna, can you please stop? Deadlock being a Legion. And then here you can see a Legion wrote, if you can't play smokes, then you can all F4. So that's like the full context for this VOD clip if you just don't play Valorant. I'm assuming most people who are watching this do play Valorant, but yo, I try to dumb down my videos as much as possible because I hate it when I watch videos and I don't understand the full context. <laughs> so Andrew adds, I'm never somebody who wants drama or seeks it out in any way. So I messaged her to deal with it privately, but she ignored it. And then her manager at Real Ego mentioned everything would be sorted. Afterwards, she replies in the most ignorant way possible. To think that there are so many hardworking game changer players out there who want a chance at the spotlight, but it's being taken by people who act like this. So for more context about Valorant, what Game Changers is, is the women and marginalized gender circuit in Valorant. So Elysian is a female Valorant player. So Elysian participates in Game Changers. And there is always a lot of controversy with Game Changers. It always happens. And this happens with any esports when they're trying to make room for women and make women-led initiatives. It always sucks when it crops up. A big thing about Game Changers is that it's supposed to be providing opportunities for female players that they normally would not get because it's such a male dominated scene in the high echelons of esports. So that's why it makes more of an impact when there is this opportunity for people to get noticed and it is taken by somebody who potentially is a bad actor. So here are the DMs between Andrew and Elsian is actually how you, I think how you pronounce their name. Andrew writes, hey, what's up? Just wanted to DM you privately about whatever the F I saw yesterday in that one Ascent game, Ascent being the map. I figured you're a chill person since you're a pro game changers player for focus, but I was surprised to see you were actually duoed with that Sova. I'm assuming he He's your boyfriend too after checking your profile out here on Twitter. How come you put up or deal with this person after how he acts in a video game? It looks like Andrew was very respectful, like giving the benefit of the doubt, being like, I figure you're a chill person because you're a pro game changers player. I was just a little bit confused about it. Elsian writes, yes, he's my boyfriend. And I didn't think I'd actually have to reply to you, but it's kind of weird messaging my manager when it has nothing to do with my behavior. I clearly already had a talk with him. So maybe just mind your own business and move on. This was the DM between Andrew and the manager where Andrew sent the VOD being like, yeah, of course. The manager Ego says, I'll talk to her on another day and let her know that's not the behavior she should have and play with at all. Andrew says, I'm actually relieved that you didn't react weird or whatever because I don't know how you personally see this. Of course, it's not her that said this, but I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me, you know? Considering the position she's in, 
position and the platform she does have. The manager says, I mean, defending that behavior isn't much better. Obviously, she didn't say it by herself, but she should definitely do better than that. As I said, I'll talk to her. Hopefully that's fine. And then Andrew adds all of this just to end up losing RR as well. What's the point? RR being like the ranking points of the game because they lost. So he's highlighting the fact that, oh, wow, this is actually pretty unfortunate. He's highlighting the fact that they lost the game. Andrew went 16 and 13 on Phoenix, a duelist. It makes sense that duelists will get more kills, you know, because they're a duelist. The Sova went 13 and 16. And then he's highlighting how LCN went 9 and 16. Of course, we all have bad games, but yeah, that was like the point he was trying to make here. And then Andrew adds, she really thought her actions would have zero consequences. So this is a tweet after everything happened, writing, I don't know what you want to achieve with this when I already had a talk with him and told him not to do it anymore. And I told you the same thing in DMs. Do you need attention that bad? Very bad try at canceling me for somebody else's doing. And then a screenshot of LCN's page with their posts protected. So I am curious as to what you guys think about this situation. It always gets into really tricky gray area when somebody's associates says, up shit, but they themselves may not. Remember, I made a video a little bit ago about this happening in, I believe it was Call of Duty, if I remember correctly now, between Steffi Evans and a streamer called Simply Shroomy. They're both streamers, actually. They got each other in a game and Shroomy was in lobby with a bunch of her friends and her friends were being very misogynistic, saying slurs, stuff like that. And Shroomy was there. Shroomy was also being a pick me girl too. And kind of bullying Steffi, calling Steffi a bitch, being like, um, Call of Duty is a man's game, saying stuff like that, right? So in that case, definitely Shroomy was much more in the wrong because they were egging their friends on. The friends still said majority of the bad stuff, but it always gets in a tricky situation. In this situation here, the slur and the, you know, staying KYS was not said by Elsie. It was said by their boyfriend. But I would say if somebody is your romantic partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, your partner, they are the most intimately connected with you. And I personally always believe for the most part that you are the company that you keep. I personally don't really believe that you could don't say like R words and stuff like that and be completely surrounded by people who do. I obviously understand people are different in different transitional periods in your lives. Sometimes you have friends, your friends do those things, they make them comfortable, you don't want to speak up. And then later you like, you know, leave the friend group because you're uncomfortable with what they do and you're not okay with it. So there could be a scenario where that is happening. I will show you some stuff later that maybe that would definitely probably indicate otherwise, but it could definitely be a scenario like that. There's also always a weird gray area with associating somebody's partner's actions with the other person, right? Because to be fair, it's two individual people, but at the end of the day, your partner is the most intimately connected to you. And if your partner is saying these things, I would be hard pressed to believe that was the first time he's ever said the R word in front of you. Really hard pressed that it was in some bro stream when you guys were playing Valorant, that was the first time he's ever said it, right? He said it way too casually for it to be his first time. He must be always saying this, telling people the KYS for what? Not picking a smoke. Like obviously it's frustrating, but not warranting you saying all of that stuff. Hard pressed to believe that was his first time saying that too. But yeah, so that's always like a really interesting gray area to fall into. I'm curious as to your thoughts as to whether you think Elsie should be punished for their partner's behavior. And I would say at the end of the day, they're not necessarily being punished for their partner's behavior. They're being punished for not standing up to their partner's behavior, not saying, hey, that is not cool. Like, I, I'm not OK with that, like not actively voicing or defending the person that your partner is attacked. And instead telling Reyna to calm down instead of your partner and telling them to alt f4 out of the game it's not really a good look but just throwing in my two cents my personal opinion as a person i do judge people based on the company that they keep and if you are surrounded by people who are saying the r word i will assume you say it too that's just me because i surround myself with people who don't you know do stuff like that and i surround myself with people that i trust and i'm very comfortable with none of my friends say that that's just me personally and we have commenters so truly tenzin says i hate when people use the excuse of quote well i didn't say it end quote like it absolves them of responsibility you shape into the people you allow into your life and it reflects your values and character. Also imagine having a duel like this is not embarrassing to witness. Yeah. Andrew says 100% who you surround yourself and associate with is such a big indication of who you are as a person. But can we also deep how this is her boyfriend slash significant other too, not just a duo. And yes, I do want to put out there's a big distinction here, okay? Sovo is her boyfriend, okay? Her partner. That is a very, very intimate level of relationship to have with somebody that is like probably, I'm assuming, going to be the closest person to you. If it was a random duo you found on Twitter that and this is your first time playing together, that's different, okay? You you didn't know. Seraf says, quote, who you are as a person is greatly reflected by who you surround yourself with, end quote. Cannot stress this enough, bro. Spot on. Andrew says, glad to see there are people out there with a good head on their shoulders still. Nem says her boyfriend is trans 
transphobic as well. Andrew says the red flags go on, I guess. Imagine dating a transphobic significant other whilst competing in the scene. Again, that's an allegation. We don't know for sure. The Oxen's Twitter page is under protection. It's protected, so we can't see any of the previous tweets. I will say Game Changers and a lot of women-led gaming spaces is for women and marginalized genders. There's a fair amount of transgender players. Too. So to be transphobic or, you know, to date somebody who is transphobic and then participate in the scene that is supposed to welcome trans individuals beats me, bro. Smile says, I remember when her boyfriend wasn't on private and you could see all the anti-LGBTQ propaganda on his page. Andrew says, I wonder why it's private now. EJ says, in my eyes, they probably also act like their duo behind the scenes as well. Being comfortable around that behavior whilst also having a platform is absolute cook fam. Also, round one being that upset is unfathomable. Andrew says, for real, EJ Scouter, unfathomable. Kim Full says, already had her blocked, had a weird experience with her in a rank game a while ago. Let's just say she hasn't changed at all since. But Andrew says, but still reps one of the biggest orgs in the game changer scene, CBA. Sienna VT says, saying slash doing nothing is just as telling of a person as if they did agree. Insane how people rarely take the way others act and letting it pass. So sorry you had to deal with all of that. And Drew says, literally, that's what I'm saying. If something isn't right, you should speak up and hold that person accountable, especially if they're your own duo. But the fact that they're together is just volumes that this is how they act, LMAO. And then there is this tweet made by Kenzie who goes by, it's Kenzie, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, on Twitter saying, isn't this the girl that witch hunted me for months, lurked in my stream to clip me, quote, playing bad, end quote, dragged out and accused me of being boosted and more just for a McDonald's meal? I remember seeing this on my timeline because this blew up. So LCN writes, I wish I could defend this, but I can't. It's such an obvious boost. It's insane. How do you feel proud of this achievement when as soon as you solo queue, you can't hold your own? 195 out of 209 games you have either duo, trioed, or five stack, 110 ADR, and 0.78 KD, and 28% win rate in the 14 games that have been solo queued. I don't know how people can defend boosting in 2023. It's embarrassing. Worst part is she knows she's boosted, but acts like she deserves this rank. I mean, when I saw this on my timeline at first, I was like, well, the stats don't look great. You know, like, I mean, if you do have 195 out of 209 games and you do well, and then you play solo and you lose like 14, and you have a 28% win rate in the 14 games that have been solo queued, it doesn't look great on first glance, on first clients okay there's a lot of context some people just only really like playing with friends they don't like playing alone i'm actually one of those people if you looked at my rank games it is almost all duoed okay i will straight up admit i am fully boosted bro like oh because i like playing ranked with my friends so i mean we play together right because i don't like playing alone i never flaunt my rank or anything right i play the five games it takes me to get a rank and then i sit there so last season or last act i was bronze because it is what it is bro i'm bad at the game i like playing with friends that's straight up so i'm guessing kenzie probably is in the same boat where they like playing with friends. Also, I'm sure we all have the experience where you play the game and you just have a bad couple of days and you're on this giga lose streak. I've had that in League and if you clipped only that moment out of my gaming history, I would look like the most boosted MF that's ever touched the game, bro. I have lost 12 games in a row. 0% win rate. But if you count the last 12 games, okay? It looks really, really bad. Overall though, my overall win rate averages out to somewhere around 50, but I don't know, bro. I don't know what was happening that week. I was having the most horrendous week and I lost every single game in my defense. Most of the losses weren't my fault with the exception of two of them. Almost every game, I had like an 07 top laner, bro. What am I supposed to do, right? What do, what do, you, what do you do when your top lane fed the Garen so that he is now seven and O and he runs bot lane? What am I supposed to do exactly, right? But anyways, I digress, right? We have bad days. 14 games is not a lot of games to be honest it's really not a lot of games to show somebody's gaming history it could have just been an off week and i do think like call out posts like this being like oh my god look at how boosted this person is especially when it's around about a girl it definitely really gives me pick me vibes you know what i mean like people are boosted and most of the time boosted people are men i'm just putting it out there you guys can disagree with me in the comment section man my boyfriend's a pro player pro league of legends player the amount of boosting that goes on mainly among men that want to I don't know, have a dick measuring context to be like, look at me, I'm diamond and flex to their friends. But we all know that you play um, about as good as me and I'm hard stuck silver, okay? It happens a lot, mainly with men that get boosted. So that's why I just, it just feels kind of targeted and weird when I see call out posts because it's almost always about women. And especially if it's another female player calling out another woman, it just gives me the ick 
personally like and even if this person is boosted how does that change your day bro you lost your game already i mean it didn't change anything right it is what it is sure it could be valid to make a call out post if this person then goes on to get signed to an esports org and then then their entire career has been boosted maybe that could be valid because there is some impact there but bro this is some poor girl that you didn't even get in a game so to me that gives me pick me vibes barely read this because it's so small elysian tweeted take with a grain of salt because it's so blurry but i believe elysian wrote yeah that that paid for my McDonald's meal something parentheses thank you something I love you or thank you Kenzie I love you in all caps and then at least Elsian wrote no because our words like you get me my engagement and this was tweeted by Elysian themselves on uh, October 29th 2023 so going back to the previous point that I was making about like you know maybe this is a situation where Elsian themselves don't do these bad behaviors they happen to date somebody who does do these behaviors maybe they're in a weird place in their life whatever they can't leave their partner there could be a situation like that Elsie and themselves also says it which is why I am not very inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt and believe that is the case I am very likely to believe that Elsie and, and their boyfriend are like this behind closed doors and let us slip on camera on in game because again when you're in game everybody had streamer mode on so you couldn't see anybody's names till after the game's over so they probably did not know they were in game with a streamer like Andrew o. although I don't know how you couldn't tell by his voice because I feel like Andrew has a very distinct voice and then here's the follow up to the screenshot where LCN says okay well that's kind of disgusting but nevertheless my point stands Rayan writes I hope you enjoy your McDonald's meal trying to hurt other people for your own game isn't attractive and yeah it definitely just gives me pick me vibes like what did you gain from doing this there's there's literally no gain LCN writes I did enjoy it, thank you and I would do it again Rayan says I hope you figure out your internal problems because that's wild behavior and then there was this post so if you guys didn't get the context already those screenshots are of Kenzie and then LCN writes like puts a clip of Kenzie's stream writing my silver queen Kenzie will reach diamond in no time I'm sure hashtag I love Kenzie in all caps again this is fucking weird this is like stalkerish behavior why are you so obsessed with this person Kenzie I'm assuming from everything that I've seen it doesn't look like Kenzie wronged Elsie in any way it doesn't look like Kenzie did anything it looks like Kenzie is just a streamer streaming maybe they're boosted maybe they're just having a bunch of bad days why does it matter right it's not impacting your life Elsie keeps making all of these tweets and I remember that McDonald's tweet being like thank you so thank you Kenzie in all caps that's weird that's really weird behavior like genuinely why are you so obsessed with Kenzie genuinely but we have chrome cutie writing so satisfying and Kenzie said did you see she apparently used to go by another alias and got perma banned for cheating or something I don't know how real that is but I've seen a lot of people talking about it in their replies chrome cutie says I did not I've only seen what you posted about it so far but I love how the tables have turned on somebody who is so vile about the OG alias that people keep throwing around Jacob or Sorrows writes Larry's and Kenzie asks was this proven true I'm unsure they link back to this tweet that was made by anti cheat PD stating some Valorant players were caught cheating and have been banned. If you suspect anybody cheating, join our server and report it. So as you can see, Larry's hashtag 6666 is one of the listed creators to have been cheating. And then we have Diablo writing Larry's is still playing with a new account, by the way. And then Kenzie asks, so is this her confirmed OG alias? Jacob says not 100% sure, but I wouldn't doubt it. Did some looking. And then as you can see, Larry's is from Germany, which is the same country that Elsian is from. That itself doesn't prove much, right? Ooh, but what's crazy is Jacob writes lol yeah no that has to be her old at because seconds later Elsian had blocked Jacob so again we don't know for certain but there is that accusation there I'm just providing you what has been floating around I don't know if it's true or not we don't have any solid proof creamy says I remember that shit effing wild Kenzie says all for me to solo queue back to diamond on a fresh alt but I hope it was worth it and cream says literally karma is truly magical you know I do think it's really interesting too because a lot of times people project right this is me with my little tinfoil hat but I feel like Elsian might have been projecting about their insecurity in Valorant because they allegedly had been cheating on an alt account in the past so of course they're going to be insecure about their rank their status in the game and their skill level and they would then take that and project it onto other players project their feeling of insecurity onto other people and unfortunately Kenzie was their victim it's Emma Lou writes yes I went to her profile before she privated and searched boosted and there were so many tweets she deleted the original post about you I believe Kenzie says yeah when she got signed she deleted everything she went private right now but before you could search Kenzie or boosted and so much would pop up she literally invested days just farming views off of me.
Oh yeah, here we go. The full thing with LCN writing. Yeah, she paid for my fat and McDonald's meal today. Thank you, Kenzie. I love you in all caps. Thank you. And I would do it again. Okay, this is me being a little bit more conspiracy theory, guys. Let me know if you like me yapping like this. I, I try to keep things objective, but I have to say, every time I see people with the really, really, really strong emphasis and talking about how much they love their partner, like here, the profile photo being like, I love my boy. Like when it's like that, you know what I mean? Like not just like cute, wholesome matching profile photo, but like literally in your face like that. A lot of times there's a lot of problems in the relationship itself the whole ned situation on buzzfeed the try guys where he was like i love my wife and he was cheating yeah i tend to find that in life with the people that i know and I've seen and heard about in my life when they are very, very blatantly in your face. I love my partner. Like, oh my God, in your face. Like beyond the typical cutesy couple matching profile photo, matching Discord usernames, whatever type shit, you know, that's like the cute stuff. When it's like this level, a lot of times my, my conspiracy in my life, my life, I'm not accusing anything, just, just what I've seen. They tend to have relationship problems. They tend to have a lot of relationship problems just from what I've seen. And they project and cope by like overly singing off the rooftops about how much they love their partner. But maybe I'm the problem, right? I have a boyfriend. We've been together for five years now. I love him so much, but he's not my entire personality. And I have a lot more facets to me than just him. So I don't talk about him too much, but I, everybody that knows me and knows us knows that our relationship is super strong and super solid. And I love him very, very, very much. He's currently in Brazil for a League of Legends tournament. So I'm sending him food pics to make him jealous because my food is looking better so far. Nothing against Brazilian food. He's just stuck eating hotel food right now. Dina has literally had her blog since that interaction. I cannot believe that a girl can be so evil and weird to another girl. Kenzie says, I'm not surprised by any of her behavior at all. That being said, as much as I'm glad her poor behavior is being called out, I hope she does not receive death threats and aggressive things like I did. I just like apology, but I don't know if that would ever happen. I do want to say again, death threats, whatever is never okay. Don't stoop as low as these people, right? That Sova, their partner, was out here telling people to KYS, do not do the same thing as them. That does not make you better than them. That makes you on their same level, okay? But then to wrap everything up, we have a tweet that was made by the manager, Ego. Ego wrote, we believe it is our responsibility to take a stand and have already drawn the necessary consequences and remove the player in question from the active squad and benched her. Even if she herself was not the one who made these completely unacceptable comments, she unfortunately failed to distance herself from them in a sincere and credible manner. From our point of view, it is important to take a clear stance in such situations and clearly stand up for the fact that certain human values are non-negotiable. Especially we in the Valorant scene, after all, has already happened, should take this issue much more seriously and show empathy. This has not happened here and is therefore not in line with our values. We hope that everyone involved will take a moment to reflect on their behavior and hopefully learn from it. We will remain in close dialogue with the player in question and support her in this reflection as far as we can. And there are interesting people defending what happened. You know, we have Misfit saying she didn't even do anything wrong. Her boyfriend has lost his rag in a game and you fired her from her job for it. That's the true cringe. Most of you will be sat typing far worse than KYS and private cringe scenes. I have to say first off again, I really hate the whole thing of being like other people say this in games. So it's like, okay, we should not normalize bad behavior and we should always actively work to make a positive change. Here is an example where this org is working to make a positive change by cleaning up the scene and showing that when people say effed up things or do not stand up for their partner saying effed up things, if you are somebody with a platform as a pro player, that you would suffer a consequence for it. And in the future, this will give other people an example to learn from and be like, okay, I will not do this. If you look at this situation on its own, is it potentially fair that LCN got benched due to somebody else's words? They did not stand up for what happened, but it was somebody else's words. It's a big gray area. But when we take everything into the full context, considering Elsian's past behavior and the fact that they themselves have said the R word in the past and R somebody did not defend or stand up to their partner for saying it. And they basically blew off the entire situation. I do think given all of that context, in my personal opinion, it is fair. And we have Craylon saying, okay, and where did your responsibilities towards the scene go when you signed a player previously banned for cheating? Question, kind regards. Yeah, that's definitely also a iffy one to me. Potentially, they could have not known, right? We can't fully guarantee that account does or did belong to Elsian. We can't prove it. It seems likely. And then we have Kiss stating, while well, she didn't stand up against what her boyfriend said when she should have, isn't removing her from the team a bit too harsh? An apology with a guarantee of it not happening again on her part would have sufficed, no? It is whatever it is, I guess. Sasha Chung writes, it's not the first time this exact player and their partner have been under fire. First time was long ago, but most of us active players haven't forgotten it. Kit writes, if it's multiple offenses to the same extent, then yes, it's warranted. I just thought for somebody's first time, this was a bit much. Sasha says, oh, no, 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 no. This has been going on for a while. I just think this time it actually happened to be towards somebody with a bigger platform. So focus actually 
actually have to do something this time. Mad Seda, transphobia, toxic, loves calling game changer players boosted, left, right, front, and center. Main perma ban for cheating, pick your poison. Control Kaz writes, nope, game changer as a whole was created to be an inclusive and safe space. If you act as a bystander and don't call shit out, you're enabling it. Also, there are many things coming up about her past behavior within the past year or so, which reinforces this. Kit says, I mean, pro players are held for their actions, be it game changers or tier one or tier two. Again, I didn't know they had previous history of wrongdoing, so my comments is just based on this one clip. She actually had the opportunity to apologize, but put silly comments under OP's post, instead laughing at him for trying to, quote, cancel, end quote her. Grimacing emoji. A simple sorry would have changed things. Again, like I said, I do think if you look at this situation in isolation, it does look like it could be a bit of an overextension of a punishment, right? But again, this person does have a problematic past, has shown behavior that is not supporting a welcoming environment that Game Changer's whole purpose and point is supposed to be. I do think with the full context, in my personal opinion, this is fair. I'm curious as to your thoughts about this entire situation. Do you think it's fair that they got banned for what their boyfriend said in game and not what they themselves said? They didn't technically say anything completely wrong. They just did not defend or stand up to their partner whatsoever and then kind of blew it off when they got called out for it. And do you think their previous behavior and actions should be taken into account, come up with the conclusion of benching this person? So I'm curious as to your thoughts. Let me know down below. If you like this video, I appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe. Oh, and again, please do not go out of your way to harass people. That will only make you stoop down to their level. Check me out on Twitch. I do stream three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays at 6 p.m. PST. Hope to catch you guys there or in another one of my videos.